Forget about it. Good morning. It's December 20th, 2016. I'll call the Wright County Board meeting to order. We'll begin with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The minutes, December 13th. Here I have a, a little tweak to okay. a committee advisory board update. Just a clarification under the um, Fry County Regional Forensic Lab. Just to spell it out a little more, the two year grant is helping with the DNA backlog. It's that um, the two year grant will um, be used to hire a forensic scientist to help with the DNA backlog. It's just a little two year grant is for to hire right will be used to hire a forensic scientist to help with the DNA backlog. Okay, anything else? With that, I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. I'll second it. Motion by Commissioner Houston, second by Commissioner Delight. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries unanimous. The agenda. Anything to amend on the agenda? I'll make a motion to approve the agenda. Second. Motion by Delight and second by Burrell. Any further discussion? If not all in favor say aye. 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 Both same sign. Motion carries unanimous. Consent agenda. <clears throat> Anything to remove for further discussion? I'll make a motion to approve the consent agenda. I'll second that. Motion by Delight and second by Houston. Any further discussion? I, I just want to make Mark happy because the uh, appointment for my parks commissioner is 38 years old. He said he wants some younger. Wanted younger. So. He gets it. And uh, he'll be up. I just want to say he's going to be a very good person on the board. I, I know him real well, so I think okay. he'll do a good job. Any further I discussion? have no doubt of that, Charlie. You'll like him. Anybody that you put on with him, you'll do a good you'll job. like him. He runs an oil change business. Oh, he does. <laughs> <laughs> All in favor say aye. Aye. Both same sign. Motion carries unanimous. Bob Hebel, Auditor Treasurer. Good morning, Bob. <laughs> hey, good morning, Board. Uh, the first item on the agenda is to approve the November revenue expenditure guidelines. Uh, I handed out just today. I suppose I could put this on here, Lee. Again, trying to give a narrative to those budget reviews. So again, trying to stay consistent. I'm showing two years. That's fuzzy. Elmo hasn't woken up yet. For an open gov, we go back multiple years, but for the presentation to you, I wanted to show you comparative to last year. So you'll see that through November, we tend to be above budget uh, for revenues. Again, that's primarily driven by the November tax settlement. So it does look like um, we're above budget. Reviewing the budget line items, we, I do anticipate that we're going to end in a favorable position on revenues. Our fees for services like boarding of prisoners and planning and zoning, they're again coming in above budget. Our investment income it looks to be, uh, we're going to achieve our budget, which is good. What is the total budget for the year for revenues? Total budget for I can grab it here. Oh, that's okay. I'm just going to see if we've already met it yet or not already. Well, again, the, the budget column is 11 twelfths of it. So I'd have to click on that column and tell you what, the, what it would be. But again, on a prorated budget, we are exceeding the proration. Oh, but it looks like we brought in 103590000 so far. I'm just wondering if that's 
where that is relative to what we had budgeted for 106. Revenue. Yeah, Commissioner, I think it's 106. Six, okay. 6014. Okay, thank you. Then on page two, again on the expenses, um, just eyeballing it, if you take a look at the colored line items, uh, outside of wages and benefits, we're doing pretty good as far as meeting our prorated budgets. Um, but again, we're seeing significant savings in personnel, and that's due to us not being able to hire the people that were budgeted for and staff turnover. Of course, the wages also generate savings in the related liabilities. The board, again, November, with 92% uh, of the budget time completed, looks like we're uh, going to end the year in a very favorable revenue and expense side of the year. I have my budget with me if you have any questions on them. So where are we at total expenditures year to date then? You've got the number on here for revenue but not for expenditure. Well, in your guys, I mean, yeah, there. yeah, mine's back in the office. Or in the future, I'll have my surface with me so I can click on the faster for you. In the general fund, uh, we're at fifty million nine nineteen four fifty two. So we're at ninety percent of our expenditure budget at ninety two percent of the year on expenses. So two percent down so far. Correct. And again, that's pr primarily driven by the personnel and related liabilities. Any questions for Bob? I'll make a motion to approve the uh, November revenue expenditure report. Second. Motion by Commissioner DeLide and second by Commissioner Potter. Any further discussion? Not all in favor say aye. 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 Both same sign. Motion carries unanimous. Board, the second item on the agenda is to schedule a ditch meeting I'd like this to be the a ditch meeting for the committee of the whole. We have four ditch issues that we talked about with the drainage inspector, uh, Brian, Dan and I met with Mike, and not an impasse, but we're at a point where we really need to get some guidance from the drainage authority as to what do you want us to do. Um, for example, commissioners on ditch 13, where we've ordered a redetermination, we really need to make some assertions as to um, how far of a repair or an extent of a repair can be done on that ditch system to give guidance to the viewers. Can we get some information before you have the meeting? Sure. Regarding all these so that we just don't have it at that meeting so we can look at it and Commissioners, do it absolutely. Mike, Mike will have some uh, inspector, <clears throat> ditch inspector reports that we can definitely share with you. Yeah. I'd like to see it ahead of time instead of at that meeting so that I have a chance to do a little research or whatever. Right. So can we schedule the meeting but also get you that before that meeting? Mike was hoping that we could meet sometime in January. <clears throat> sometime after one of the board meetings? Um, what's that? Afternoon. Yeah, afternoon of one of the board meeting days. That would work for the, the drainage authority. In the afternoon? Yeah. We, we believe it's going to take it's an hour right. to get through these issues. <coughs> to the 17th? Yeah. 17th, that would be better for you? Yeah. 17th at? 17th. Yeah, Mr. Chair, I'll make a motion to set the Dish Committee the whole for January 17th one at 1 p.m. 1 p.m.? Okay. Motion by Commissioner Houston. Is there a second? I'll second that. Second by Commissioner Potter. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries unanimous. Flames. Flames. Board, because of the holiday and everything, we normally these are on the consent agenda, but uh, they're on the claims. Uh, they're on my time items this time. And they will be next week as well. Your motion to approve? 
So moved, Mr. Chair. I'll second it. Motion by Commissioner Potter, second by Commissioner Delight. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All same sign. Motion carries unanimous. Thanks, Bob. Tony Rasmussen, County Assessor, and you got a couple of guests with you here today. Thank you. Uh, first off, Board, I'd like to introduce you to the newest member of our Assessor team, uh, Mitch Douglas. Go ahead, stand up, Mitch. Uh, you Mitch can see tall. he's yeah. very tall. We, we decided to pick the tallest person we could find this last go around. So uh, he's worked with us for the during his college time. He worked for us for a couple summers, so we know what we're getting. We're very, very happy to have him on our team. Uh, the other person I want to recognize today is uh, Mike Vanderlinden. He has attained his SAMA license and as you guys may uh, remember this is the highest level that you can achieve with the state board of assessors it uh, shows professional competence uh, and uh, from our standpoint commitment to the profession commitment to the county and the benefactors will be the citizens of the county uh, I just wanted to bring it to your attention. He's the fifth one in our office right now, so okay. ratio-wise, we're doing very well with uh, people with uh, AMA and SMA uh, licenses at this point in time. Congratulations. Congratulations. Yeah. Um, now, is, is that the new requirement that we have to have SAMAs or? Oh, uh, accredited Minnesota Assessor license is uh, going to be the standard and senior accredited is one level above that. There's uh, multiple tests you have to take, a lot of additional education that you have to have, additional years of service in order to attain the SAMA designation. Was there any, uh, I know at one point there was some discussion about backing that date off and different things. Was there ever any changes to it? No. As, okay. And what is the Still deadline? There. Deadline is uh, 2019. For okay. people that are currently licensed, and if they don't attain that AMA, they will not be employed as an assessor. They will not be able to get, be able to perform the job. And uh, do we have any people in our office that still don't have that requirement? Uh, currently, the ones that we have are new. They're trainees, so we're going to have uh, up to four years after they attain their CMA license in order for them to attain the AMA license. Uh, the, the ones that are 2019 are the ones that are currently CMAs that we're uh, looking to get through. Right now we have one left to get through uh, and get his AMA. So you have to have experience before you can get the, the a AMA? Correct. Three years. Three years. So the, Three years there's minimum. a requirement so you've got to work your way up to it then mm -hmm. yep. in the field training. Correct. So unless we brought them from another county, they would never have that experience? That meet that criteria then? Correct. We'd have to get them trained and get them to go through the, the battery of what you need to uh, go through in order to become an AMA. We were proactive with this. We saw it coming uh, a few years back and we were able to get uh, all the assessors at that point in time that were in our office uh, AMA certified. Good. Congratulations and thank you. Yeah. Well, welcome, Mitch, and congratulations. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Regarding Mike. Mitch, Charlie, don't you have some questions? Well, he usually kind of runs people through a battery of well, questions. Yeah, that's so. why I was really curious. <laughs> <laughs> and, and no, I got to avoid because we went to item two so real quick. So. I don't do it at the regular board. Now. Well, that's that's not fair. <laughs> okay. So I'm supposed to say, where are you from, Mitch? <laughs> If I'm Plymouth, okay. Any plans to move to the right county? <laughs> <laughs> that would be Mark S. Yes, make it through probation. <laughs> anyway, congratulations anyway. Welcome. Yeah, welcome and congratulations. Welcome. Congratulations. Thank you. Thanks, Tony. Brian Osselson, Chief Deputy Attorney. Good morning, Brian. Good morning, Mr. Chair, members of the board. Um, two items. Um, two action items on the uh, agenda request that I filed and filing it in, I don't know if Tony's coming back or not. <laughs> oh, are you still here? I'm here. Oh, okay. I thought I saw you go out the door. Sorry. Um, this, is something, six, eight. <laughs> <laughs> this is something that uh, I've worked on with uh, Tony Rasmussen and Bob Hevela. The um, 
Department of Revenue requires us to have an abatement policy, and that is largely based in uh, the statute that allows county boards to abate valuation or taxes. And if you look at the policy itself, number one kind of quotes from uh, Section 375.192, and basically the county board has the power to <coughs> grant abatements uh, for the current year and for the two prior years, but the abatements for the two prior years are only for situations where there might be a clerical error or where the taxpayer has failed to uh, file for a reduction or an adjustment due to hardship as determined by the county board. And, you know, we've, um, in Wright County, we've had an abatement policy for in place for probably 20 years or more. I'm not sure that it's been re-looked at during that time. Uh, and the Department of Revenue is asking us to update. Um, our old policy actually said that we would only consider abatements for the current year and one year prior, which is more restrictive than state law, and we're not allowed to be more restrictive than state law. So um, the policy that you have before you is kind of updating, and, and uh, mm -hmm. basically we, we looked at some other counties' um, policies. This one is... Um, uh, largely based or, or um, at, le at least a part of it is based on Sherburne County's policy which has already been approved by the Department of Revenue and uh, we're just here to answer questions about that um, so that would be as to the first uh, action item. Charlie? Um, Brian, I have a question. If Let's say Bob's office declined an abatement request would the person be able to appeal to the county board and we would be able to grant abatement that's an, I guess, I, we, we're going to end up with final authority. The board will. Mr. Chair the, sure. um, and Commissioner Burrell, that's a good question. Um, let me first speak to the statute. The statute says that if it's an abatement of, um, that has to do with the valuation or classification of the property, Tony has to uh, sign off on that before it ever gets to the board. So in other words, if, if Tony's not in support of the abatement request it never sees the light of day at the board um, with penalty and interest abatements so we're talking about taxes that were paid late or something um, Bob has the ability to to check off on those so they have to have Bob sign off before they ever get to the board um, what you may be asking about the next step would be as if if the board delegates certain things to certain powers to Bob as auditor, um, he would work with Tony, but the statute says those are delegated to the auditor treasurer. You know, is there an opportunity to go uh, to appeal from that determination? And I guess I don't know the question. The statute, I don't know the answer to that question. The statute really doesn't say that. It just says you delegate certain powers, or you have the ability to delegate certain because powers. Because right now it would come to the board without. Um, Right, right now, there are certain abatements that have been delegated according to that 95 resolution that I included in your packet, and I think it included homestead uh, abatements, and maybe that was the limit of it. Well, we had the one here a few months ago in <coughs> St. Michael, for example. and On penalties and interest? Yeah, on penalties and interest, and that would fall under this policy, I presume. Um, it would. And, and Bob never signed off on it, so I don't, first of all, I. I don't disagree with Bob's action on it. I think Bob's action was appropriate, but even had myself and others disagreed, I don't, we don't have the right to overrule Bob, do we, on that? Mr. Chair, I, uh, yeah, the, I remember speaking to you, and I don't remember exactly what I said during that process, but um, I agree with you that I don't think the board has the right to grant an abatement if, for penalties and interest in that instance, if the auditor treasurer says, no, I don't agree. I think I think we agreed to give that particular citizen time to address the board at least about his concerns, and um, I can't recall if Bob, um, you know, was was on the fence or not. I um, I think he was fairly strong in that he didn't feel an abatement of penalties and interest was proper in that instance. So, and I, I think we gave the gentleman an opportunity to come and speak to the board, but I don't necessarily believe the board had the authority to overrule Bob. And furthermore, I don't necessarily believe the board desired to either based on the set of facts, but.
I don't know, Charlie, did you get your question and answer? Yeah, but, but I mean, it's, see, Bob's an elected office, so he's going to have some statutory authority that we don't have the right to, you know, intervene on. Right, and 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 I guess the way, if we don't change this, Brian, what what changes? I mean, some things come before the board right now, and it Correct. sounds like we're giving up something as a board, and and. Bob may like that or he might not like it either because he might say, you know what, this is, like Pat said, you're on the fence with this one, I'll let the board decide. And that's, I don't, I would, you know, think that that's okay to let Bob, you know, bring it to the board yet. But would these ever come to the board then now? Uh, is it just totally up to Bob and, and Tony? No, Mr. Chair and, and uh, Commissioner Burrell, uh, the way I see it is abatements. Uh, um, I, I think we're, well, the resolution that you have on is a action item number two would delegate uh, to the auditor treasurer abatements um, not exceeding $2,500 for the current year. Um, so those would not come to the board. Um, abatements for homestead properties for the current year and the two prior years would also not come to the board. So so there's um, the ones that would come to the board, I guess looking at this would be over $2,500 in value, or not in value, but in tax dollars, and any requests dealing with more than just the current year, um, I, other I, than Homestead. Yeah, and Charlie, and I, and I don't mean this, I'm not trying to argue that we should necessarily give up authority to Bob. I'm just saying where Bob has authority, well, we shouldn't try to No, 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 and, 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 and I, maybe I'll have to reword my, my clar clarify what I'm trying to get at. If Bob decides yes or no, I'm okay with it. I think Bob's a pretty fair guy, mm -hmm. and I, hopefully he, our account, uh, auditor treasurer is elected by the people, and hopefully he's representing the people. But let's say he has one where he might say, I, I'm leaning against this, but you know he's talking with the person and says, you know what, I, I'll let this go on to the board. If you know, he said it's one where it's a close call for me. Uh, let's see what the board says. Would he have the, would he be able to do that? I guess. Yeah, let's say he wanted. That's kind of where I'm coming from. Um, because there might be that, there might be that call where, you know, yep. Bob might not want to be the bad guy, and even though he thinks it's wrong, that it's it, there is kind of like Pat, uh, Commissioner. Bob Swansky's never wants to be the bad guy. But. Well, no, <laughs> nobody does. No, but I, I mean, it's easier um, as a board doing it than than a single individual sometimes. Commissioner so, Burrell, I, the only thing I can do is to look at the statute, and it, it basically says, well, and, yeah. uh, the same would hold true for Tony, if it involves uh, reductions in value. It basically says. Um, all applications must be approved by the county assessor um, before consideration by the county board. And then the part about penalties and interests involving Bob, it says um, um, on any reduction or abatement where, um, where is it? Let's see, penalties and interest. I'm not finding it right now. But it mentions, it's basically the similar language, which says that it doesn't, Get to the board one year to two years, unless it's yeah. approved by the you know by those officials, yeah. and then and so that's in statute. I, we can't. I guess my other that. my other question, as far as a general question, is how how come we have a policy like this and we don't have it go through any kind of committee and it just comes here and then we're you know we hash it out in front of the cameras and you know somebody. I'm just wondering. I just think it would be better to have, because then we could ask more questions and dig into it in a lot more mm. detail if it went through a committee first. Mr. And maybe, Chris, maybe, maybe that wouldn't be a bad idea to... to <coughs> well, and I, I think but, a lot of times we do this one for whatever reason, Dan. Yeah, I, and, Chris? And, and Brian, isn't this more of an... I mean, it's, it's to help the person, property owner, in circumstances, really, so in, I don't know if that if some of those circumstances really need to be brought before us and it's discretionary. So I think that in that case that uh, I'm, I'm well, and Chris, with. And, and don't get me wrong, I'm not arguing against it. Right. I'm just arguing against that I don't know enough to really know what I'm... I mean, say someone has some kind of a disaster and they just make the decision to abate their taxes for that year. You know, that's a... 
I mean, there's there's a lot of, I'm sure, if these circumstances come up on and a I very guess, really regular basis. But. Okay, and Brian, if, if we voted on this next month or now, it's not it's not time sensitive that way, would it be? Or it, I don't believe be it is, Mr. Chair, uh, Commissioner Burrell. Uh, uh, Tony and I have been going back and forth, and it's it's been kind of a back burner issue. It'd be nice <coughs> to start January one, but it's been out there for better part of a year that we've been talking about it and on and off. Yeah, and I haven't seen off. it before now. So, <laughs> Brian, if this, we had if we had a version with strikeouts, is the only thing you, the only thing you, you had mentioned how you change it from one year to two years because you wanted to follow the statute. The statute requires it. We don't have the ability to to not. But there must be some other changes in here as, in, as well, correct? And see, we Mr. Chair, know. there's a lot of wording changes just to, um, in an attempt to be more clear. Our, uh, I want to say that our prior policy, which I did not provide to you, was probably about a page long. And this one's about two pages long. It just, it tries to make it more understandable to the taxpayer. But are you saying then that with the exception of going from one year to two year, there's no other change in here with any substance? Um, Everything else is pretty much doing it the way we do it now, but just clarifying the language. Or I would is there actually changes in Mr. The Chair. I would I would say that and the um, the delegations that are in, involved or, or included in okay. the policy. But the but the delegations in actually are a change in substance. Correct, Mr. Chair. I would rather see this before voting on. So I'd make a motion that we um, send this to the committee of the whole. For, um, to look it over and that way we can see the old one and see the new one um, because I read this and I just still have a lot of questions. Okay. So. Motion by Commissioner Burrell. There a second? I'll second it. Second by Commissioner Delight. Any further discussion? And then Brian, if, if this does pass, maybe we could bring the original and then mm -hmm. this so we can kind of compare it and make a, okay. Let me know more of what I'm voting for. <clears throat> any further discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Aye. Aye. Motion carries 3-2. And so that, that would negate the second action item. We'll, we'll see you in January and talk about it, I'm assuming. Thank you. Thank you, okay. Thank you Brian. Adam Tagaro, Information Technology Director. Good morning. <clears throat> Good morning, Mr. Chair. Good morning, Commissioners. Uh, this morning we were bringing forward a records and data management policy. Uh, this is surrounding the records retention and Can records I first management. ask that this go through the technology committee? We did not officially put this through the technology committee, no. Okay. Go ahead. So the, uh, the <laughs> I know you just had one of these, so um, as we try to get our arms wrapped around records retention, we wanted to get this, this policy out here. And if this ends up going back to a committee, so be it. That's fine. Um, but we wanted to bring it forward so we could start some of the training on this. As you guys, as commissioners, uh, attended one of our leadership teams and received the training from Scott Larson, our records management analyst, on records management. Um, this is key when it comes to deciding what is and isn't a record um, and is going to be very important for our email retention policy that we put in place last week, kind of helping employees decide what should go where. Um, and so this policy that's being brought forward really is clarifying what a record is, um, kind of defines the purpose of records management, defines what the roles and responsibilities are within the county and the state, um, classifies what exactly is an official record, and what the difference is between records and records media. So there's a hot topic right now about email going through different mm -hmm. counties and state legislation as far as is email a record. Um, we also go over the use and maintenance of a record and what constitutes a vital record. So I brought Scott with me today to kind of go over and answer any questions, maybe give an overview in more depth here. Um, but for a little bit of background, we did work on this uh, with administration and the county attorney's office. Um, so this is one of our, the first steps to, to moving forward with records management. Yeah. Mr. Chair, that's what it seems to me. It's more of an administration and legal. Um, I'm not sure if that fits under technology per se, but certainly I guess they, that's a big component. Okay. Mr. Burrell. Um, Mr. And we have talked about records retention several times at technology committee, but I guess what concerns me with this, and, in, uh, and, and we didn't write this, I mean this is, we 
cloned it from somebody else and probably blended it together, I take it? Uh, it's mostly uh, best you, practices. It, it came from somewhere. It, Parts of it. Yeah, right. Okay. Yep, Scott so, did a lot of custom, custom writing in but this. But here's, here's my concern. <coughs> we're ex we're going to expect every, I would say, yeah, virtually everyone that works for the county to abide by this policy, right? Correct. Um, I read through it and I'm like, it's very lengthy, very detailed, um, but I mean, to, to start training on it, yeah, I mean, you better start now because it's probably going to take a couple years to people. I mean, how many pages long is it? Like 10. 13. 15. 16 pages long. I mean, it's just, I don't know. It just seems to me that it's, you know, when you start doing something like that, it makes it, you know, well, gosh, I didn't see that. I didn't, you know, and I mean, I, I couldn't argue with somebody when they, you know, yeah, I must, I must have uh, turned two pages at once there, or whatever, you know, when I. Well, I don't know when it comes down to actually, I mean, there's a lot of it that's um, just legal de de definitions, yeah, mm -hmm. but I don't, I don't think it's all that complicated. I mean, it, it does bring it down to the classification for the data. And it is, I mean, we can't continue the way we're going. Um, so and keeping everything. Yeah. And, and it's, this is a good thing to start with the training. I mean, if you looked at, I think you had a rollout uh, recommendation too. So Correct. why don't you fill us in on when that, how that's going to go. So there's a lot of training involved before we get to that point. Right. Yeah. You want to touch base on the roles? The roles. So basically, what I started with was starting from the top, basically with the legislation or legislators, and bringing it down to uh, to the end user, what they're actually responsible for. And uh, a lot of this is is like you said, it's spelled out. It, it comes from different locations, and it's trying to pull everything together into one document so that it's uh, easier to read, easier mm -hmm. to understand. Um, I, and, uh, I guess I'm going to say the same thing with Brian. I, I don't like it that we have committees, we have procedures. To I'm more of a hands-on board member. I really do. I want to be involved in this. We've talked about it a lot of times at technology, and I've never heard the conversation come up yet at technology where, say, I'm l looking to do this here. Here's another way we could go. This one's here, 16 pages. There's another county that has this policy that's five. You know, here's the deficiencies in that or whatever. And I, I guess I would. <coughs> I, like I, I don't know. I guess I, I don't know. I must have. I know I've heard about this and I've seen other documents regarding this. So, and it might be just that I've been doing a little bit more on my own too. Um, because I mean, we, we can. Well, because there's other t members on the board. It's just not just you and me, Mark. There's there's other members that might be, go through this and say, and here we are voting for the approved thing already, and and maybe somebody from Human Services or wherever. I mean, we have technology is brings the sheriffs and every department in. They might say, well, it's not covering this, or what would we do with this record? It doesn't answer it. So. Commissioner Burrell, I'd like to make a clarification that this does not include any of the retention policy. This isn't the how-to document on dealing with your data. This is really setting out, defining what the roles are, defining what a record is, how we classify data, and kind of defining how the records retention will be put into place. So, for instance, the, uh, the definition of retention basically states that we cannot destroy a record before the retention pieces up. We're not actually specifying record A needs to be destroyed after so many, so much time and such. So, I guess I would just like to see this go through technology committee as well. Or Mr. Mr. Chair, I'll make a else. motion to adopt the records and data management policy. Motion by Commissioner Potter. Is there a second? I'll second it with a caveat. That, second that, by Commissioner Delight. No, it's your caveat. That, um, um, that for the most part they start the training part and this is just a starting piece and there's going to be more that's going to be coming before the um, technology committee so this is just to help get the training going and then we're going to be hearing more about this at the technology committee as time moves on so that you're aware of it this isn't, so, isn't the end all
this is the starting point. And if this is what the board wants, is just to come in here and rubber stamp everything without go going through committees. I mean, that's what we let's get rid of our committees. Honestly, well, Mike, yeah. if you don't want to, if you don't want to deal with it, I would rather deal with this because not just me, but there's a whole lot of other people on technology that might have something to say about this. And, and I, uh, I have no position on the policy at all. I have no doubt it's a good policy, yeah. but I am a little surprised at a document titled "Wright County Records and Data Management Policy." did not go between before the IT committee before it came to the board. Yeah. We might as well get rid of the committee if we're not going to bring this before. Any so further I discussion? Would, I would urge people to vote no on the motion. All in favor say aye. Aye. Both same sign. No. Aye. Aye. Motion fails 2-3. I guess Mr. it's going to the committee. Mr. Chair, I'll make a motion. This goes to the technology committee. Motion by Burrell. Is there a second? Second. Second by Delight. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Both same sign. Aye. Motion carries 4-1. Thank you, Commissioners. Thanks, Adam. Thank you. Public hearing on proposed assessments. Mr. Kreiser, good morning. Good morning, Mr. Chair, members of the board. I'm here with two proposed assessments before you. Um, one is a follow-up um, last invoice that came in after the last notice period for the Gutnick parcel at 3659 40th Street Northeast. This deals with storage fees of six buses at Berta's Towing, and the total amount of the assessment is $2,160. Any credits that came from uh, the sale of those buses and equipment was credited on the last assessment that you did. So um, this is just for that final charge for those for that time period. The other assessment before you is for 5107 County Road 12 South in Marysville Township. This is a public health cleanup of the exterior portion of a foreclosed property that was vacant um, and, and had a lot of garbage and trash outside of it, and that was a public health cleanup. We did not go into the interior portion of the property. Uh, that was secured. Um, property has subsequently now been redeemed by uh, Fannie Mae. So. That's the information I have. I stand for questions, otherwise public hearing and it can be opened. Greg, did, did this go before? I don't remember this at Human Services Board. I don't believe it did. Um, the, the public health authority in that instance was uh, Carol. And I think we've kind of restricted some of her authority that that had to come to the board when they're doing things like this. I don't know. Um, I, I'm going to re-emphasize this to the board and to the public. Public health has an extreme amount of power. If we, if we just turn it blanket over to them, there is, I wouldn't say virtually anything they can't do, but they can do a lot of things. If you read the public health statute in the state of Minnesota, that is one of the reasons I think our county board wisely in the past had the county board acting, the human services board and with the members of are the county board uh, in charge of that, to oversee it and to regulate it. And I think that we better take a look at this next time we meet at Human Services and make sure that we're looking at things like this. So I'm not saying it's a bad thing again at all. Probably needed to get done. But um, I think, barring a, an emergency type situation, I think we should have these things go through the board. Uh, Charlie, you're referring to the Marysville one here, yeah. particularly? Yeah. We well, not the other one. The other one, I think, has seen. But, but just to be clear, I mean, if I remember, we took a vote and we said that there was going to be cleanup of the outside. Wait, you're, you're confusing it, Mr. Chair, with a different yeah. parcel that was actually. There, we have two of them in Marysville. Okay, yeah. I am confusing you're it. Confusing this it other one. a different one. Yes. So which is this one? Never heard of it before, Pat. This never came before the board. This is one that went into foreclosure, and the property owners abandoned the property, and. There was trash strewn about the entire property. It was unsecured and, and vacant property um, with garbage all over it. So and I'm, I'm we going to the exterior portion of if, it. If we don't have a policy to regulate Carol's authority on this, we better get one. That's all I'm saying. So is that, I mean, just again, just so we understand, so that one there, the board has not been made aware of in the past. I don't believe so. I haven't been at a, at a public hearing where it was. But if it was abandoned, yeah. Well, no, I'm, I'm, I'm not arguing. I'm not arguing that. But 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 I just, I, my question is, 
what what is the criteria that some come before us and some don't because obviously like the other one in Marysville that I brought up that I thought it was came before us and we actually specifically yeah. stated the parameters by which we wanted the property Septic. cleaned up Septic. and Septic the parameters compliant. by which we did not want the county to go mr. chair commissioner Burrell um, to follow up on that the, the other one that we brought before you I escalated that one to the full public services board because that one had someone living in a trailer home and living in what I view and I think the public health authority views as complete filth um, in that particular instance and we had someone actually actively living in that residence this one on the other hand was a vacant parcel had been abandoned and, and was in active foreclosure okay is it, uh, it's in foreclosure with a bank but the taxes are paid up to date I believe so okay so ultimately that this particular assessment then will go to the bank yes the bank um, has now redeemed it okay there's I, I you haven't had any I mean I, I presume the bank has been made aware of this process the bank is Fannie Mae's I sent the notice over to the federal national mortgage corporation in Washington DC and someone by the name of M Murray signed for it at that federal bureaucracy okay. and they, they they did not give any response so this no, will I would not this will go to assessment on them on their taxes no. and the next time the taxes come around they'll have to pay it and I mean that's without question mr. chair correct okay mr. chair mr. Potter in, in all fairness the bank looks at this and they don't have a problem with you cleaning up a foreclosed property for them because it's going to cost them a lot more money than it's costing us to do this right now if they had to go out go through the steps to hire somebody they're looking at they're better off just letting the process go and mr. chair and commissioner Potter I did have a talk with the foreclosure uh, attorney on this during the process and he indicated to me that while I was in redemption they couldn't do anything to clean up the exterior portion of the property only thing they could do was secure the residence and which is what they did and then we went and cleaned up the property during the redemption period which they couldn't do okay in, in that particular property is a twelve thousand five hundred eight dollar one that's correct okay is it a house or I believe it's a house um, getting back to the one in Buffalo Township why did we haul the buses down to Rogers which is I'm assuming where it went well we hauled the rest of them out to uh, the county compost facility the reason mr. chair commissioner Burrell for the difference here is that the these were buses that were large the that commissioner time, Dahl I'm sorry. <laughs> right. excuse me I apologize That's right. I'm confused too because <laughs> you're wearing a tie today I know <laughs> well uh, Ms. So commissioner Burrell uh, commissioner Dahl yeah. um, I have one Christmas tie and I, I thought know. today would be the day to wear it I <laughs> confuse you. Uh, he does look much different mm -hmm. without his bow tie <laughs> um, but commissioner Dahl I to follow up these are buses and we 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 didn't have the ability to store them at the compost facility I don't believe they'd fit underneath the hangar um, with the being towed in with the commercial um, towing equipment and being able to park in an appropriate manner we just didn't have the space at the compost facility with all the other operations we have going on there so and Berta's gave us this they weren't towed to Rogers they were towed to a lot that Berta's has in Monticello And they held them for 36 days? Yes, until we were able to notice it for an, uh, an auction. And how much did, uh, what was the credit regarding those six oh, buses? It was on the previous assessment. Uh, I want to say it was around $300. Mr. Guten total. Mr. Gutnick bought most of them back. Okay. I'll make a motion. Oh, to wait, wait, we've got a public hearing right here to, sorry. to put on. Uh, anybody from the public wish to speak on this issue? Uh, we, do we, are we going to hear well, both we'll, of them at once? Or? I don't think anybody's here for the second one. Well, either one, I guess, if you want to. No, we, we can allow for either. Or, well, we'll, I think either. Yeah, anybody wish to speak to either of these two uh, assessments? We know there's nobody here for the Marysville one. Dan, you wish to speak? Now's your chance if you want to. <laughs> no, well, you showed up. I don't want you to. Mr. Chairman and committee. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, well, they had asked me what they wanted to do with them, and I told them to take them right to French Lake because they, they gave me the option, and, but they hauled them to 
Monticello and charge me storage. And they said it would cost more to haul them to French Lake. And I said, well, it's going to cost me storage up there. So, yeah, that ended up to be an extra $2,000. And then they said I could come get my property out of them. Well, they wouldn't let me get my property out of them. I had to buy them back at auction. And, but I made a deal with them that I could get my property and give the buses back to Berta. And, so he could do whatever. But so, yeah, I just... Mr. Chair? It was... Sorry. Commissioner Hewson? And so were you... They bought them back from you then? No. I just... You, I just got my property out of them and let them have them. So the... The money that was charged for storage, they didn't... They didn't um, waive that? No. Well, whatever he paid for them, though, he got back because it went against his. So it wouldn't matter if he had to pay $100,000 a piece for the buses. He got the money back, right, Greg? No. Yep. So basically, he got to get his stuff out. He just had to go through a procedural thing of buying them and then getting the money back because it was yep. he was buying them from himself. Yep. So, would you agree with that statement that even though you had to buy them, you didn't right didn't yeah, cost no, you I, anything? Right. Yeah. Why wouldn't they let you get your stuff out of them? I'll answer that, Commissioner. Doll item. The reason he didn't get his stuff out of them is because he waited until three o'clock the day before the auction, and Bertas wasn't able to open the door at three o'clock on the day before the auction at nine a.m. So okay, that's why. He had 36 days and waited till 3 p.m. Does that sound right, Dan? I think it was it was more than the day before. It was a couple days, but yeah, I had to hire somebody to help me because I couldn't do it by myself. But I had to try and get you know, trucks and uh, help to help me with that. And so then, uh, well, they let me in a half an hour before the auction to start on removing stuff, but. But I know it's money spent already, so I, like I said, I, but uh, it wasn't my wishes. I told them to take them right to French Lake, because French Lake, when I take them to French Lake, French Lake lets me get my property out of them. They just have me go over the scale, and then, so what they haul in, whatever I haul out just gets subtracted from the weight. So. Did you ever consider taking your property out before you had it hauled somewhere in the first place? Well, these these last ones were my buses. I was trying to put a fence around them, screening fence. And but it was where they were sitting was wet, and I couldn't get in there with the auger and everything to put posts in and stuff. So anything else to add, Dan? No, that's it. Thank you. Anyone have any questions, for <coughs> Dan? Okay. Uh, anybody else wish to speak on these two assessments? If not, the public hearing is closed at this time. Do we have to do them individually? Uh, please. Yes. Mr. Chair, I'll make a motion to approve the assessments on the uh, 5107 County Road 12 South in Marysville Township. I'll second that. Okay. I have a specific resolution on that one. Any further discussion? Oh, there's a motion by Potter, second by Hewson. Any further discussion? Um, Mr. Chair, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to vote for this. But I said, I think this is something that we need to bring up at Human Services and make sure this thing had, had plenty of amp opportunity to be brought before the board, and it wasn't. And not saying the outcome would be any different, but I think that we have to have a policy that public health is not going to be acting on their own. So. Well, and I, I think particularly if these things are ultimately going to come to the board for the board to put an assessment on people's taxes, we, the board ought to have a decision in advance of what they're going to be putting that assessment on. Exactly. Because you know what if now we say well hey we don't necessarily like this money's been spent and it's already done a rock in a hard place yeah, yeah. and and but, but I would agree with the chair I mean based on what I heard it's, I think I would have supported it had they come to us yeah um, in, in the first place but uh, yeah. it, it puts us in a difficult position if later we have this bill in our hands and suddenly we don't like what what was done maybe occurred you know any further discussion roll call vote Commissioner Burrell aye 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 Resolution carries unanimous. Uh, 3659 40th Street, Northeast Buffalo Township. I'll make a motion to approve the abatement or the um, assessment for that one. Motion by Commissioner Delighton. Is there a second? I didn't hear all what he said. Uh, uh, Commissioner Delighton moved the assessment on the, that property, the resolution we have attached, are included here. Is there a second? I'll second that. Second by Commissioner Hewson. Any further discussion? And this is the one at 
40th Street in Buffalo, the yep. Gutnick property. Yep. Uh, roll call vote for Mr. Burrell. Uh, aye. 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 Resolution carries unanimous. Thank you. Yep, thanks, Greg. <coughs> okay, uh, bid opening, public works, roof replacement. Alan, good morning. Good morning, Mr. Chair, members of the board. We have uh, 10 submittals. I believe you have a tabulation sheet in front of you. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and open those bids. And uh, the base bid line, just for assistance with the tabulation, is I think the fifth column over that you can write in the uh, numbers. First one is from Deer and Pearson Group. Now, and can you just while you're yes. doing that, can you just clarify what this bid was for? Yeah, so this bid is for a full system replacement on the sloped roof. The uh, EPDM flat roof on the 1974 building is still in reasonably uh, good condition, so it's good for a couple of years yet. We did some miscellaneous repairs, but this would be for the replacement of the sloped roof with a metal panel system, uh, removing the insulation, the underboard, and the shingles, uh, replacement with new insulation, new board and new metal panels. Okay, and so anything with the elevator, excuse me, um, anything with the elevator, the... Oh, this is that. for Public Works. Public works. Oh, this, that, oh, yep. I'm, no, okay, I'm totally, yep. sorry, sorry about that. You, when you say the sloped roof, you're referring to the shingled roof. Correct. That will be replaced with a steel roof. Correct. Okay. Yes. Along with the boarding and the insulation, yeah. it's, yeah. The, it's the, the reason, the major reason is to look to, prove, to improve the quality of uh, the, or to stop the sweating of the roof. Yeah, there's try and stop the sweating of the roof. Try. Well, no, this is going to, because okay. right. inspect is standing behind it. Uh, commissioners, this is I basically a, right. basically a full replacement. It's not going to work. I'm just, well, I, I wouldn't bet my life on it that it will. But well, they're standing behind that. This is the issue, that this will solve the problem. Okay. With along with the additional insulation. I would presume that the. Asphalt shingles had just about met their life expectancy anyhow? Uh, they're pretty close, yeah. They're pretty much getting to the end. The issue, if I may just clarify, there's a couple issues. One, the venting in that roof is not working properly. Um, so we get those large bulges uh, that you probably have all seen or heard about um, in the roof in the spring when it warms. Uh, the ice damming issues where we get large uh, sheets of ice that are damming off between the two adjoining buildings. Uh, there's several issues. The insulation um, in the project is actually below standards of what's required on a new one now, so this would bring it up to standard code. So back to bid opening, the first bid from Deering Pearson. Uh, the number is $359,000. Second uh, is from Central Roofing. Central Roofing's number is $399,210. Third from B&B Sheet Metal and Roofing. The number at 292596 Next from Diverse Construction Services. Next is from Burwald Roofing Company at $240,510. 510? Correct. Lake Area Roofing is the next. Two hundred eighty nine thousand one hundred thirty two.
from McDowell Company, $310,700. Next from John A. Dalson and Son. Four hundred fifty two thousand nine hundred dollars. Uh, next would be Horizon Roofing. Three hundred forty two thousand eight hundred thirty. And the last, uh, Grindstone Construction Services. $324,519. Want these laid but over else, for a uh, week? We, what's that? You want these laid over yes. for a week? Or? Yeah, I'd like to lay them over. I'm not sure if the next meeting uh, we can fit something in for a recommendation or what the process is or if we have to push them out two weeks. But oh, I don't think there's a problem with that if that's what you would prefer to do. Yeah, that would be fine with me if we could do that. I'll make a motion to lay these over for a week to uh, tally and make sure there's no errors. or I'll second that. It. This should only be a couple-minute deal on the board. There shouldn't be a lot of controversy here. No. So, Motion uh, by uh, Commissioner Potter, second by Commissioner Dwight. Any further discussion? Yeah. Um, <coughs> were there any addendums? I see you have addendum one. There on was. There. It was a clarification uh, that everybody read from a the original spec that went out. We had a pre-bid mandatory meeting. There was an addendum just clarifying some dates and some requirements oh, okay. that were in there. So, okay. Commissioner Houston. Um, Alan. Yes. How many of these companies are Wright County companies, just out of curiosity? Um, I know B&B is I local. guess I don't know off the top of my head. Grindstone is here local. They're doing the work um, currently at the building. Okay. B&B um, is. B&B is, B is local. Yep. And Grindstone is. Yeah, he said that already. Uh, and Dalson. Horizon is Wade Park. Dalson is Minneapolis. McDowell is St. Cloud. I think there may just be a couple here in local okay. within Wright uh, County, but I'm not you. sure Thank of you. a couple of them. Okay. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries unanimous. Say, Alan, as long as you're here, I assume the hangar build, or not the hangar building, but the, the uh, tipping floor area building has been removed? Um, majority of it is. Uh, at building committee, we had discussed uh, with the extreme cold last week, I gave them a couple extra days. So the sheet goods are gone, but the frame was still up. Um, and then I was unexpected or unplanned out yesterday, so I wasn't at the site, but it should be down today okay. or within a day or two. Uh, everything should be That's removed good. and completed. Yeah, well, he's definitely got two or three good days to work on it now. So Yeah, it should be a good week to get it finished up. Okay. Did they cover up that pit? He was going to be doing that. I haven't, like I said, I haven't been out there to see uh, what was done with it, but he agreed to do that at no additional cost, which is in the building minutes for yeah. further discussion. Yeah. So. And he had... Uh, he has a sub that's going to be doing that certain work he wanted that has the proper appropriate credentials. Yep, that's the that's the agreement we have. Uh, we met on that and discussed it at length. So great. Thank you. Yep. Thank you, board. <coughs> building committee, of the whole commissioner Deline, please. How about it was just the building committee? I don't think we did. It the whole. Oh. You're right. I was. Uh, I didn't see that um, <coughs> comment in there. Building, and then next is committee of the whole. There you go. Building. <laughs> um, building committee met on the 14th. Members present were uh, Potter, Delighton, Wilsek, Matice, Job, Tagaro, and Stevens. Um, we just got an IT expansion update um, about uh, where the cost finally came in and everything else. There was a couple of things that the. Um, they want to finish up with, and they're going to do that based off of their uh, funding from their existing IT <coughs> department budget. Um, item number two is a public works deferred maintenance and remodel. Uh, Wilsick provided updates on the status of the public works building modification. The LED lighting retrofit has been done in the mezzanine, in the wood shop, in the fabrication <laughs> shop. Yeah, the fabrication nice. shop and the wood shop have been painted. Uh, the vehicle service shop is in the process, um, and the LED bulbs, um, again, will all be retrofitted out there and then also in the, in the office area, too, once it's all done. Um, 
Furniture has been decided in the group, has been ordered. Uh, it's going to come in a little bit under budget. And uh, <coughs> there was an old house that was removed, and the pit below and was cleaned and sealed. And then a new um, a new hoist was put into place for uh, the Parks Department. Um, there is one outstanding question regarding uh, <laughs> carpeting in the surveyor's department um, file room. Um, if it's going to be done, it should be done now. And I actually haven't had a chance to go out there and looking at it. but. It's currently tile. I'm not sure why we'd want to carpet it with all the file cabinets in there and stuff. Um, the window replacement, the slope roof replacement projects had their mandatory pre-bid walkouts or walkthroughs. Um, the bids uh, for the roofing, he just heard, and the bids for the window replacements will be tomorrow. Recommendations was to continue to move forward in the projects and that uh, we would go out there and just double check on whether or not we need to replace the carpet or put carpet in the, in the um, file cabinet. Item three was a recycling center, tipping floor demolition. Um, as you just all heard, I've heard it's, all the sheet metal is down. Um, <coughs> Carlson Construction said that he had some telephone poles and railroad ties that he was going to put over the conveyor uh, with some trucking tarps that would cover that up and keep the snow out of it for over the winter. Um, and um, Stevens had asked about the detail at the roof cap. There's some currently steel <coughs> sticking out. Um, and also there was some um, an area that um, is having um, wind actually blow through it for the <coughs> Venting. Was that what was my venting? Well, so, uh, yes, the uh, venting of the of the air ducts come. Through. Yeah, so it's for what comes from the main floor um, inside the building, and it's just blowing through. So they're going to throw some insulation in there, so that it because it's dropped the temperature inside quite a bit. So they're before what that was all covered up, it wasn't so much of a problem. But now that it's opened. It's directly blowing wind right into there. So we're going to throw some insulation in there to solve that. Um, so again, there was no recommendation. It was just updates only. But it's moving along. And we did, um, we'll check, I did give them some additional days because of the cold. I don't want anybody working out in that cold the way it was. So it's hard on both man and equipment. Mostly, mostly man. Um, item number four was a micro market bending concept. You have pictures of that, and um, it was something that um, Burnix is willing to do for us. The only cost will be in, for us will be to have some security and a little bit of electric done, and. Um, there will give us an 8% commission on the products. It will allow more healthier options for the county employees. It'll be in a secured area. Um, for the most part, there's no risk to the county other than having those electrical outlets and uh, security installed. So it's an honor system, but you got, got cameras watching you. Is that the deal? I'm assuming. I'm not sure. But they, um, they're willing to do it. Well, I mean, and it's I, in a secured area, so I guess you're being videotaped if you don't go through the process and pay. They'll be able to. They'll they'll, they'll do it. It's not on the counties. Um, and if we don't like it, it's not working out the way we want it. They will pull it. Um, one of the reasons why it's going to go into a secured area is the courts have asked us to open up the lunchroom. <laughs> So that uh, people would have more access to bending and sitting when they're oh, here in the trial assembly when they and yeah there's a down over here in our large room. So okay. they're looking at removing the doors, which is why this is going to go behind a secured area where only county employees will have access to it. So that would be open to the public. Not I guess that's been what's been requested. Um, 
I don't think it's gone to the committee yet. What would be open to the public? The current lunchroom. Okay, but this area would not be. This area would not be. That's why there's some additional charges for security because it's going to be secured. In one of the existing little rooms back there, no. Oh, same area? Mm -hmm. Not the part that's by the out exterior windows, but that next okay. little cove area. Um, so uh, it was recommended to move forward with the installation of the market. Um, I know <clears throat> the county employees have been asking for additional um, healthier options. This will give them opportunity. It will be fresh fruit, they will, and uh, salads, and it will be revolved every three days. The picture so. doesn't indicate what's on there, though. So. But anyway. Uh, so I thought you're looking at well, where's the healthy options? Well, I'm not necessarily seeing them, but it's hard to tell what some of those things are. Candy bars. <laughs> well, I see a lot of chips and candy bars that didn't pop. I do see that. Over to the right looks like some healthy options in that far right one. Yeah, in the cooler refrigerator. <coughs> Can candies are healthy when, when your blood sugar's drop. I'll make a motion to approve the... Uh, <coughs> Building minutes. Motion by Commissioner Deline. Is there a second? I'll second that. Second by Commissioner Potter. Relative to the compost facility and the dollars that we have not been paid but can capture if we build a little addition on out there, what is the deadline for that, Alan? Chair, I believe the, I think we have two years to get that completed, if I recall. I'd have to verify that with Tim Dahl, but uh, we've received. Just shy of 60,000, I think 57,9 or uh, 57,8. Uh, this project was approximately, I believe, 34,000. And then there'd be an additional approximately 60,000 if we complete a structure within, I think it's two years, if I recall. Well, it, it would seem to me it would make sense to utilize, I mean, take advantage of that $60,000 that's available then. And I think you want to make sure you check on that deadline so it doesn't get missed. Right. You can build a pretty decent uh, if, if you add those numbers together. So does it? It would have to be beyond. It have to be sixty thousand dollars over what they already gave us to get the sixty thousand dollars. I presume. Right. It would be a replacement. A total of just shy of one hundred and twenty thousand. If you did a replacement. Okay. Uh, again, I'd have to verify that language. I would with think Tim, you could get a pretty good size lean to for one hundred twenty thousand dollars, couldn't you? <clears throat> I would think Don't you so. think? That would be something we need to discuss if we want to post frame. We've talked a little bit about that, but, yep. you know, get some builders in. I've talked with uh, one builder, um, get some ideas on that, but we'll need to make some decisions on what process we want to go through on that process. Yeah. I think as long as we have that footing that goes around that's already, you might as well build on top of that. That's the way a lot of... Um, but we weren't talking about replacing the whole area. No, no, no. Be but then, uh, and then on the back wall... You could either build that up with cement or just from there go with a longer wall. You know, yeah. that, that might be the best way to do it. Well, in the next question, we then somebody will drive through the back wall because there's no cement there. So, well, <laughs> like I say, $120,000 is a good, seems like a good starting amount, but maybe. Yeah. Well, it depends yeah. what type of construction you use, too. I mean, if you have big giant. Well, you know what? It will have, save uh, because you won't need to. You know, we're not going as high as it was before. To be as high, and you already bought, and what is the, what is it? Eight foot cement there? Yeah, they're eight and a half or nine. You foot, know, yeah. so yeah, that saves you a lot of money the, right there. The original ballpark estimate numbers were saying just over two hundred to do a post frame. It wouldn't span the whole thing, so we'd have to put up a couple central columns. Yeah. Uh, they can't engineer the wood that far. <clears throat> Excuse me. If we did a metal frame uh, building, potentially we could span it. I don't know if, but, what the cost savings would be or what, but they're. Throwing out numbers of just over 200 for a project with 16 foot ceiling, so we could scale that back or do whatever. I haven't gotten that far in depth. But if you bring the south wall closer to, you know, in, sure. then you're not, you might be able to span it then too. It would be nice if they could span it. That yeah, they're only short by about can. 10 or 15 feet in that range of spanning the whole thing. So. That's, a, that's a very long distance. Well, you can, I mean, how far? You're, you're going to have to put 125, 124 and change. Never mind. So, yeah. <laughs> I didn't think it was that far. <laughs> Because okay. you can go 60, 80 feet with wood. But. Any further discussion? That's a lot, right? Not all in favor say aye. 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 Both <laughs> same sign, motion carries unanimous. unanimous. But if you go 60 or 80, you'd only need some, one thing in the middle. Then. That's true. Yeah. I mean, that wouldn't well, be a big problem. Yeah. You've got to have some bins and different stuff there. Anyhow, they could just be right around <laughs> that area, you know. There's gonna be, it's not like 
there's, a, there, be vacant. there's lots of options, and they'll all be explored in the future. You'll be on there. You'll be on it. Right? No, you will be. Oh, that's right. I have no fear. Yeah, it worries me. <laughs> so Charlie's going to get on the billing committee? <laughs> Probably. Nice. Pay the whole. Yeah. Lee Kelly, please. Not Mike, I think. 29th? Or we're going for 1129 one. I gave you the 1215 one, right? Okay. Okay. Lee, 1129 um, one. That's the strategic. Strategic planning one, right? Yes, That's yeah. correct. The first so you two. do that one. You got the next one, Mike. Thank okay. you. Uh, so as mentioned, we met November 29th to discuss strategic planning. Uh, all five commissioners in attendance, including myself and Sue Virgin. Uh, that day we talked about the committees and the committee listing. I wanted to update that prior to the beginning of next year. Uh, first, we talked about the building committee and then moved on to the owner's committee relative to the highway department and the owner's committee with the courts project. Uh, the consensus was to eliminate the owner's committee highway at this time. Any additional items uh, relative to that facility uh, could go through the building committee to be addressed. Uh, next recommendation was re regarding the capital improvement finance committee and we talked about the deferred comp committee as well. Uh, we proposed combining those into one combined committee uh, just under the title of finance slash CIP committee. Uh, the purpose, uh, a revised purpose was discussed to meet once a month for the purpose of reviewing the monthly budget reports and the CIP uh, and then make recommendations regarding uh, emergency withdrawals from the deferred comp plan. Uh, there were questions raised about the statute requirements of the deferred comp committee and uh, I was asked to look into that further. Um, and doing a little bit of research, it appears that uh, we could assign that deferred comp committee to another committee. Uh, we just have to have one in place based on the plan design of the deferred comp. Uh, and with uh, further discussions, I think we kind of came to the conclusion that it might fit better under the personnel and benefits as well. So, <clears throat> okay, is there a motion to approve the? I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of the committee of the whole. Motion by Dwight, second by Houston. Any further discussion? <coughs> Not all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries unanimous. Mr. Potter. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, as a kind of a continuation of the strategic planning, the, uh, we met on 1215 members present oh. Burrell, Delighton, Hewson, Potter, Swatsky, and Kelly. And you follow, uh, Coordinator Kelly provided us a follow up regarding committee listings and what in the different strategic plan meeting of the November 29th. Um, discuss the idea of combining the deferred, deferred comp and that would do there. Uh, part of the whole committee was discussing the kind of goals uh, at, from the leadership commute, uh, retreat was to continue to provide quality public service with limited resources was one of the goals. Second goal is ensure the county's continued financial stability. Uh, we got a uh, given the county was given a double A1 rating as of December 9th and, and thank you to not only the board, but Bob and his staff and, every, and the administration, everybody for helping us achieve that. Uh, goal number three is to foster a positive environment for employees. Uh, Kelly noted that the administration and HR have been reviewing county policies and procedures and ongoing policies. And I think there are a few out there that are a little bit dated and that need to be looked at, I guess. Um, uh, we're, Kelly noted that there's been good progress on facilities projects in 2016 with the different uh, buildings and what have you has been going on. Goal four is to adapt the county changing demographics. <coughs> you know, the uh, solicit input on the goal of identifying additional strategies. Uh, Commissioner Burrell noted the Central Council, Central, Central Minnesota Council on Aging, good resource. Um, and I noted that the, the Minnesota, in Minnesota, Wright County is the second youngest county in the state. And I, uh, and there was also a discussion of the veteran service officer's role in helping the county's veteran population, which is destined to increase here in the future. Goal number five is adopt new technologies when and where appropriate. We're continuing to leverage existing systems to improve efficiencies. And in 2016, the Technology Committee has definitely uh, done a lot of work on prioritizing projects. And uh, it, in both with Commissioner Delayden. Uh, he's been, I sat in a couple meetings with them when they're going through some of the redundancies and some of the efficiencies that they need to address here. Um, so hats off to him for getting that done and Connie Mae Cooper and Adam and his uh, staff over there for ideas and, and that. Uh, 
And uh, Commissioner Kelly would create updated documents for further discussion in 2017. Mr. Chair, this was all informational. Uh, it was all good talk, done, good conversation. Uh, and with that, I, I uh, make a motion to approve the minutes, and it's all informational. Second. Motion by Potter, second by DeLine. Perhaps mm -hmm. an amendment would be adding the date to them? Yep. Correct. That they would be my recommendation. And the uh, word in in the uh, in Minnesota. Yeah, correct. Wright County is the youngest, second youngest county in the state. Yeah, okay. And I guess, Mike, I should have probably given you those, those together again. I was, I was confused thinking for a second here that these were the uh, minutes of the court discussion that day. That's why I kind of broke them apart, but they should have probably just went together. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion carries unanimous. Personnel Committee, Commissioner, Commissioner Houston, please. All right, thank you. Personnel Committee met on December 14, 2016. Members present, Hewson, Kowalski, Kelly. Others present, Hess, Dahl, O'Malley, Lippolt, Strobel, Hawkins, Matthijs, Jans, Meyer, and Rasmussen. And the first item was the workman's compensation issue, and that was brought forth by, by um, Captain O'Malley. And after it was asked, requested to be at committee, there was new developments and it was no longer an issue. It was a moot point, so that was set aside. The second item was hiring practices in the jail, filling the corrections officers' vacancies, and they've been struggling for years to be fully staffed. They have 47 approved um, full-time employees, but they're down three COs and looked like maybe a couple more were leaving. And one person was started, scheduled to start next week, this week, but will be in field training for several months. So no, the request was to hire ahead a bit because they were always running short. And we discussed this for a bit. And the conclusion was a recommendation is to approve process which allows going over the approved FTE count in situations where staff will be out for an extended military or workman's comp leave. And the second item was the request for reclassification resulting in a new hiring range. The test presented four requests for reclassification. Each request resulted in significant revisions. And the four requests reviewed were highway maintenance supervisor. The change was in pay grade 13 to 15. The second one was lead shop maintenance mechanic. It's a new position and request to reclassify the new diesel mechanic FTE approved through the 2017 budget process to a lead shop maintenance mechanic. And that would result in a change of pay grade from 10 to 12. And the additional FTE was budgeted higher than pay grade 10 to account for consideration. So. And then Parks and Recreation Operations Manager, who was formerly the Parks Coordinator, changed in pay from grade 12 to 14. And the IT developer, formerly the IT programmer, it was a change in pay grade from 10 to 13. And um, Swatsky asked how many requests they've had for reclassification. And Hess said there's been 10 through November 1st, and six of those requests were um, resulted in insignificant revisions, but the four were significant. The recommendation, we approved that. The third one was authorization to utilize temporary personnel line item until Office Tech 1 position is filled in the assessor's office. And Rasmussen explained the assessor's office had a vacant appraiser, appraiser position for several months. He's made adjustments in the workload and you know, been making it work. But the recent vacancy in the OTI, OT1 classification has resulted in rotating the appraisers to assist with the front desk coverage in the interim. So the recommendation is to approve the use of temporary personnel budget to assist staffing in the department as necessary. And the fifth, fourth item was performance appraisal for Jamie Goodrum Schwartz, HHS director. The recommendation, based on three reviews received, the committee recommends a rating of meets expectations. And unless there's anything to add, Mr. Chair, I will move the minutes and the recommendation. Motion by Commissioner Houston. Second. Second by Commissioner Burrell. Mm -hmm. I, I, do, I guess I do want, it's not necessarily a correction, but just uh, 
uh, to, to make sure there's no confusion. And the first recommendation, approved process, which allows going over the approved FTE count, I would like to add the words for the position of corrections officer okay. in situations, just to make sure that this is not a county-wide policy. Yeah. It's specific to the problems that are occurring there. And Good point. If, uh, and, I, and I know that nobody meant it to be for the county, but nobody can ever point back and say, well, you know, there's the... Um, I think some of you probably seen the Channel 5 news where uh, the same issue, Joe, I don't know if you've seen the Channel 5 news, the same issue we're kind of having in our jail relative to staffing they're having in Ramsey County, but um, there instead of being two or three under all the time, they're like 35 to 40 under all the time mm -hmm. to the point where they think there's some serious safety issues. But So it's not just unique to Wright County, and I suspect there's many other counties in the state that are maybe having some of the same challenges, so this may help it a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm okay with that clarification too. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same mm -hmm. sign. Motion carries unanimous. Charlie, Personnel Committee of the Whole, please. Um, the Personnel Committee of the Whole met on December 13th. Uh, members present Sawatsky, Delayden, Houston, Potter, Burrell, and Lee Kelly. Others present Osselson, Haggerty, Hawkins, Hesse, Hevela, Hoffman, Tom Kelly, Riley, and Virgin. And we talked about the um, department head elected uh, department heads uh, salaries. Uh, Bob Hevela was first to present, and uh, he talked about his plans to um, widely implement open gov uh, drainage DB software programs and address other county ditch systems and some of the other um, um, streamlining system to facilitate automation of accounting accounts payable and entity-wide credit card acceptance solutions, so some of the things he has on the uh, drawing board. Um, and um, Bob said that he would uh, accept whatever the county negotiates with the unions, but he also mentioned that his uh, chief deputy auditor, the compensation is lower than comparable positions in other counties and that should be looked at in the future. Uh, next to present was Tom Kelly. I was, I was disappointed that Tom didn't negotiate for us like he did last year, but <laughs> that was pretty good last year what he did. But he, he showed a, a 2016 salary data uh, study from some of the neighboring county attorneys with uh, populations over 100,000. Um, he shared that with us. Um, um, he also talked about uh, information on his accomplishments and that of his staff. Um, Tom has more than 32 years uh, as um, experience with the county, and there was also discussion of um, some of the counties that he lift, listed as comparables in the attachment. So we had a little discussion about that. Um, Tom said that he runs a good office and represents the county well. He's uh, very involved in the community, does a lot of speaking around the area, area schools. Um, there was further discussion on how long it takes to settle a case, and Tom said usually from three to seven months, but depending on the severity. Um, also mentioned that his department has nearly 300 years of experience due to the quality of, of his staff. So, And um, Tom was thinking that, you know, a 4% raise would still put him below some of the comparables that he had brought up, but um, that he... Uh, will accept what the county gives him and he hopes that we're fair with him and I think we will be. Um, Sheriff Haggerty said that he loves his job. He likes working for the people in Wright County so much that he would do his job for free. So we took him up on that. <laughs> no, the sheriff did say that he loves his job, but um, um, he was just, uh, again, um, um, expecting that the board is gonna be fair with his salary and uh, we had a nice discussion. Um, Joe also did said that he appreciated the um, um, the money for the budget allocations for staffing needs from the county board. Um, so we had a real nice visit there. The next thing we did talk about was a PTO policy, and that's a paid time off. Um, um, Human Resource Director Hesse stated the legal advice from the county county's Labor Relations Council recommended discussions related to, related to the paid time off policy be held in closed session. <laughs> The reason for that is is because it may affect um, labor negotiations because some of the unions are also um, interested in doing the paid time off. So we um, did briefly discuss PTO and then we went into closed session at 11.52 and the meeting reopened at um, 
Um, uh, Sawatsky summarized the closed session dis discussion by affirming the Committee of the Whole recommendation, and that recommendation is to approve the PTO policy as presented for non-union employees to be effective 1-1 one, one of 17 with an accrual rate table as outlined during the closed session, which shall include bereavement leave. The policy will include a catastrophic bank. Uh, it will allow employees to exhaust PTO down to 15 days before utilizing the extended sick leave uh, bank or the catastrophic bank, and there'll be no cash out provision will be included in the policy. And meeting adjourned at 1.40. Okay. So with that, I, Mr. <coughs> Chair, I'll make a motion to approve the minutes and the recommendation. Motion by Commissioner Burrell. Second. Second by Commissioner Blyden. Uh, any discussion? <coughs> Do we want to have um, our HR director explain <coughs> the uh, PTO a little bit? You don't understand it? No, it's not for me. <coughs> oh. Okay. Um, Coordinator Kelly had some questions, yeah. Okay. Uh, Sonny, did you, were you prepared to give a brief overview? Um, I, prepared, I think that this has already kind of been out there, so to speak. Yep. Um, I did it's send a, a communication okay. out to department heads and all supervisors uh, following the personnel committee of the whole that the policy was going to be at this board meeting for approval. Um, they have the policy. Um, as revised and presented today. Um, I also included an implementation plan, just kind of hi highlighting how implementation would work. We've developed a calculator to assist people in determining in their situation how much of their, their sick time, up to the 120 hours, um, they would like to elect to transition or convert to PTO. All of that information will go out following this meeting. I was waiting for formal approval of the policy. Um, but just a little bit about the policy itself. The intent is it would be effective January 1, 2017. It does roll in vacation sick and bereavement leave under one PTO policy. Um, some of the changes in the way vacation and sick work right now, uh, PTO will be available for use um, as soon as it is accrued. And what I mean by that is you will accrue time per pay period. When that pay period is over, employees will be able to use it. So currently our vacation policy says that new employees cannot use vacation until after six months. Going forward under PTO, new employees will be able to use that time as soon as they've accrued it. Um, the accrual table is on page two of the policy. <coughs> Uh, the years of service breakout changed slightly uh, under vacation. It was zero to four years was the first level of accrual. We've broken that out to be years of service at zero to one, two to three, four to six, and then I believe it follows the current um, years of service schedule. Uh, zero to one years will receive 20 days of PTO upon hire. Maximum carryover for all levels of service is 840 hours. Um, that means that people can carry 840 hours of PTO on the books at any given time. Max payout of PTO, although, would be two times their accrual at the time of separation. So depending on where they fall in this grid, the maximum payout would be two times, not the full 840 hours. But that max payout would be at 100%. Um, as far as the conversion options, um, vacation, any vacation balances will convert to PTO hour for hour up to the maximum 840. Because right now our vacation um, max is at one and a half times the current accrual, there is nobody that will not have all of their vacation balance um, converted to PTO. Nobody will hit that 840. Um, as far as sick leave goes, the conversion to PTO would be um, up to 120 hours, hour for hour. Um, so basically, we're giving employees the choice based on their situation on how much from zero to 120 hours of their sick time they want to convert to PTO. Any remaining sick time balances would go into a new extended sick leave bank. Um, that extended sick leave bank will work similar, almost exactly as sick time works right now. You can use it for the same reasons as sick time. 
and the payout or severance schedule um, is the same as it is for non-union employees right now. So anywhere between zero and 35% payout upon separation um, in good standing, depending on how long the employee has been here. Um, one thing that will still need to be determined, and we will take this to a vote of all non-union members, is whether or not PTO will be, upon separation in good standing, if PTO will be paid out as taxable earnings, or if it will be put into a high deductible, or I'm sorry, a post-retirement health care savings plan. Um, once we have all of the balances figured out based on people's elections, then we will, we will be sending a survey out to allow the non-union group to determine um, whether or not PTO is paid out in one of those two ways. It's an all, um, whatever is determined will be a majority vote, and the majority vote means that everybody will follow that vote. Um, it can't be a one-for-one one option. Um, the same thing will happen for extended sick leave bank. We'll have to, we will put a, a ballot out for anybody that has hours that transition or convert into extended sick leave bank. Those people will be able to vote on how that is paid out, whether it's taxable earnings or into that post-retirement health care savings plan. The other thing um, is the catastrophic sick time. We currently have catastrophic sick time. The decision was to maintain that um, policy. Uh, how that will work is similar to the way that it works for sick time right now. For anybody that is at the 840 max um, PTO number, um, and if they don't use any PTO in a given pay period, 3.08 hours of their PTO would go into the catastrophic sick time. Um, so in essence, they're not losing their full accrual for the week. Um, part of it will go into that catastrophic sick time. Um, catastrophic sick time can be used for illnesses or injury. Um, it, it is required that people use their PTO down to 15 days, then their extended sick leave bank, and then they'd be able to access the catastrophic sick leave. I think I didn't mention that extended sick leave bank works similar to that, that if somebody has a need to use that extended sick leave bank, they would need to deplete their PTO down to 15 days before they could start using the extended sick leave bank. However, in the transition year during 2017, we recognize that there may be people who already have surgeries scheduled in 2017. And so we do have a provision in the policy that says that for one instance in 2017, people can, we're waiving that um, requirement to have to use your PTO down to 15 days and they can go into their extended sick leave bank immediately. Any questions? Does that clarify things for you, Lee? I think that's just the same thing <laughs> I, I said, wasn't yeah. it? <laughs> Mike, Mr. Chair, do, uh, on the uh, no. bringing the uh, down of the sick leave down to 15 or, or to 15 days, isn't that a significant change from what was there before? It was 10. It was 10 before. Right. So the original 50 percent more. Yeah, the original was was 10. So using sure, your PTO down to 10 days, out, that was so increased. So somebody, so you wouldn't have to bring it down to 10 days. Now you only have to bring it down to 15 before right. you can use these other. Yeah. And that concern was raised from some of the employees. Okay. Yep. You know, and I'm not sure if 15 is the number they wanted, but it was more than 10. So. Right. I just want to make sure it was out there because it doesn't really clarify that in here what 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 was the policy, what was the proposed change. Okay. Any other questions? Thanks, Sonny. You're welcome. Bob. Well, I know it's not part of the minutes, but I just want to point out that uh, this is a big project, and I have payroll staff that do assessments and everything else like that. I love a January 1st cutover. But I like to work with my staff and make sure that we can commit to that. So if you can consider that as you adopt the policy, um, we want to work with Sunny and her staff, but this is the payroll system, so I want to make sure that I'm not committing to what I can deliver. So, okay. What are you saying, Bob, that you can't do this by January 1st? Or? Well, I, I haven't talked to Carla. I know we've worked with our vendor. We know that uh, the programming can be made. Uh, we may have a situation where we have two different systems going, PTO and vacation sick leave. Well, you do have that system because um, you're going to have a number of unions that aren't going to be on the system effective January 1st, although some will probably be joining it very soon thereafter. Some may be, perhaps not. Right. Is that a fair statement, Sonny? I'm just pointing out there that there's a lot of calculation of numbers, conversions, I just, my staff isn't down here. I just want to put it out there that 
we're aggressive. We want to make the January 1st, but if there's an issue, I want to be able to come back. But if you didn't meet it on January 1st and somebody, say, for example, took a vacation day or a sick day on the 4th, is it that difficult to just go back and say, okay, you use that as a sick day because um, we hadn't implemented this yet, but in, in reality, it was a PTO day instead. It's yeah. still one day. Commissioner, we can definitely uh, own up and make those adjustments. I just, I, for clarity, I just want to make sure that if, if it's a January 1st conversion, I'm not sure that I can deliver the accounting behind it. We will. We'll get it done very quickly. But, but you said you like January 1st start days and you like working with your team to do that. So yeah. I, I think, I think we set a challenge for you. <laughs> Okay. So we really have until January 14th to get things figured out. I have had conversations with Carly. I know she started to work on things. Um, you know, her and I will have to continue mm -hmm. to work through yeah. how that whole transition. And this is going to be for how many or how many employees again? Is it um, 70 some? 100, 100, 120. <coughs> okay, 120. So it's about a little less than 20 percent of the, <coughs> the staff numbers. Okay. Okay, any further discussion? <clears throat> All was there, there, was a, there was a motion and a second, correct? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. All in favor say aye. Aye. Both same sign. Motion carries 5 0. Thanks, Sonny. Thank you. Ways and Means, Chris, please. All right. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The Ways and Means Committee met on um, December 14, 2016. Members present, Kowalski, Hughes, and McKelly. Others present, Virgin, Hevela, Faith, Partlow, Spencer, Eric, Herring, and Mike Young. And the first item was the Ag Inspector Annual Report. He presented his, Eric Herring presented his 2016 report to the committee. And he has been busy and um, sending out a large number of letters to um, people regarding their, um, their noxious weeds and that kind of thing. And I apologize, I did not bring the report with me, so I can't give into specific details. But, and there was one concern that we had is that he is out there working very hard, doing a good job but he's a little weak in the outreach portion. And if he's not able to make the township officers meeting, that it's important that he contact the clerks and let them know what, what work he's doing, spraying and that kind of thing in their townships. And he is, his job situation has changed. And so he feels that he's going to be able to make the township officers meetings and will be there in January. So the recommendation was approve renewing the inspector contract with Eric Herring for 2017. And then we met with Ditch Inspector Mike Young for his annual report. And he reviewed his 2016 goals. He had hoped to, um, to review 30% of the ditches in the county, which was 11, but he didn't quite make it. And he also has been um, having trouble getting a sprain program into place, but he's continuing to work on that and the tree removal program is underway and he feels that the long run this is going to save money he's he logged 239 and a half hours in 2016 he also really was pleased with the drainage DBL mobile app because it's been it's been very efficient for him he went over his um, 2017 goals he'd like to have 10 new ditch inspections completed and um, so that completion of four years, he'd have reviewed all the ditches. And we also talked about spraying, you know, the training for spraying. And the committee requested Attorney Aslison to modify the contract language for 2017 to cover his registration costs. We, he's a contracted employee, so we're, he's not on salary. But if he has registration costs like mileage and that kind of thing, we'd, we're going to uh, take a look at exactly the legal, the legalities of all that. The recommendation was to approve renewing the ditch inspector contract with Mike Young for 2017 
with the language modification relating to tra training expenditures. The third item was a procurement policy. And it's actually, we need a procur procurement policy, if I could say that, to meet the federal guidelines. And they're required that we have this in place by December 30, or 31st, 2016. It was suge suggested that the procurement card policy exhibit C authorized and unauthorized purchases be attached to the policy also as an appendix. So we went through the policy and made a few tweaks here and there to kind of clean up or make some clarifications. And the current purchasing policy was discussed indicating that it's not the intent to replace the purchasing policy, but they're going to be looking at it in the near future. Prior, the priority was just to meet the federal requirements and get this policy in place. So. Uh, recommendation was to approve the procurement policy as revised by the committee and with that Mr. Chair will move the minutes and the recommendations. So moved. Motion by Commissioner Houston, second by Commissioner Delayden. Uh, Brian, I kind of thought maybe we'd have some language here today. Or have you started on that or relative to the drainage inspector and that one clause that we needed to amend? Okay. Yep. Mr. Chair. Yep. Okay. We were planning those for the first meeting of the year in January. Okay. So you're going to actually sign the contract on that date and then Correct. that angle should be there. Okay. Yep. okay. I wasn't sure if kind of approval this year because it said yeah. approving the contract that that meant here today then that this was going to, there was going to be a contract to be signed after this or not. But so that one and the egg inspector both will come on in the first meeting in January. Correct. Yep. Okay. Okay, very well. Um, and then, yeah, I just—I guess I just want to reemphasize that if, if you if you get a chance to read Eric Herring's report, he just has a, an outstanding report, and he's done a lot of great things. Yeah, he has. Don't, don't we normally provide those reports for everybody in the package? Well, yeah, yeah I think typically that they're, they're not in there, but uh, we will certainly get you one each, and I, I can pass mine over to you. Yeah, we can make copies. Um, well, I'm thinking too that it should also be accessible on the website for the residents to see. And that's why normally all those sort of things in, include in with the minutes. But, but in any event, he's got to do a better job with the, with the PR component because people right. think he's not doing nothing, and he is. He is, yeah. And, and the easiest way for him to do that would be township, the biggest bang for the buck would be the township officers' meetings. Not that that's the only way you can right. have outreach, but that's and, the... And as we discussed, sending emails yeah. out to the township clerks when he's been working in their townships. and. Maybe even showing up here um, if there's a real hot topic in the county to kind of let the board know about where things are going with it. But like I say, if you read what he's been doing behind the scenes, though, there's some real good, some real good uh, initiatives that he's working on. Mr. Chair. Yes. In reference to Eric Hiring, I've known this young man for a long time, and I know he is doing a good job. Like you say, he took a job last year that was night, so it was tough for him to get in right. to the township officer, which mm -hmm. it's tough because, again, uh, the first year, a new job, he had zero vacation hours right. going in there. So he didn't have the opportunity to take the time off. Not 20 PTO days? No. No? <laughs> Not his first year, none. Huh. So that kind of made it problematic for him, you know, in raising a family. Funny how that works. Yeah, it is funny. But anyway, that's, I just want to make that clear that he had a job that changed his schedule mm -hmm. a little bit. Right, yeah. Mm -hmm. And Mr. Chair, uh, just one correction on the minutes. It should read December 13th, not January 13th. Oh, yeah. That was written in here. Yeah. Thank Any you. Any further I, I discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries unanimous. Mileage reimbursement for 2017. Thank you, Mr. Chair. As you know, we need to set our mileage rate for the county for 2017. Uh, included in your packet is the statement from the IRS that just came out earlier in the week, uh, last week. Uh, they have set it at 53.5 cents a mile. Uh, we've been at uh, 50 cents for a couple years now. Uh, so the board can set it at what they deem to be appropriate. If the rest of the board's okay with us stay at 50. Mr. Chair, I'll make that a motion to keep the mileage reimbursement rate at 50 cents. I'll second that. Motion by Commissioner Potter, second by Commissioner Usom. Any further discussion? Um, we don't need a resolution for that, just a simple motion, please? Correct. Okay. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion carries unanimous.
Hmm. Resolution appointing medical examiner. I make a motion to approve uh, Lynn Stroll. The County of Anoka to provide Lynn medical exam and services with um, Dr. Lynn Strobel. Lynn Strobel. Lynn Strobel. I'll second that. Motion by Delight and second by Burrell. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 It's it's resolution. Oh, resolution, oh. Commissioner Burrell. Aye. 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 Resolution carries unanimous. Advisory committees, advisory board updates. Commissioner Burrell. Well, Mr. Chair, not really an advisory committee, but um, yesterday's Star Tribune, right on the front page, talks about greater MSP. And this has been something that I have brought up to this county board, oh, probably for the last three years now. Um, through our economic development partnership, we are spending money to be also a member of Greater MSP. I questioned it at budget time, and they came out and did a presentation, of which we haven't really said yes or no to them yet. But after reading this article in the Star Tribune, um, Minneapolis has defunded. They had spent quite a bit of money in the past, and they put it down to $10,000. I think we're spending $10,000. I think they went from 125 down to 10. But you know, Charlie, I don't know that that 10 actually, if you read the article, I don't know that the 10,000 is going to, if you read in there, they said they're leaving $10,000 in there, but they're going to use that for something they stated in it that isn't necessarily going to the greater MSP. But anyway, they, 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 they looked at it and, and they read said, the yes, notice what I'm saying when I met, so that it isn't necessarily going to them. Yeah. But one of the, um, the council member that brought this up, Lisa Goodman, um, I just wanted to read this because it's like almost my words. Uh, my constituents have the right to see some return on investment, said Lisa Goodman, Minneapolis Council. And I think I have been saying that for quite some time. But the other thing that I found, and they, they more or less just mention it here, and not like it's a big deal, and it just totally almost sickens me, but the director, Langley, is... Um, paid $515,000 a year plus 299000 in deferred compensation as an incentive for him to stay to finish his five years. That comes to $814,000 a year. And I'm, like I said, if, if, if when, when my constituents find out that we're part of this organization, um, somebody would get strung up, I think. So anyway, I think that's something that we need to look at at budget. Let the Economic Development Partnership know that my hunch all along is that we're not getting the bang for the buck. And I think Minneapolis is seeing the same thing now. So anyway, I just, well, Charlie, we're not going to take yeah. a vote today, obviously, but I wanted to, to bring that up. I think, I think, you're, I think that to think that that organization pays the director who manages a $6 million budget, we're not talking about a $600 million budget, a six million dollar budget, eight in, for a nonprofit organization, eight hundred fourteen thousand dollars is outrageous. Yeah. Who are the directors? They're the ones that should be well listed on there. There's forty of them, and as for, Commissioner for, Potter, forty directors. As, as Commissioner Potter uh, <laughs> uh, very uh, accurately <coughs> pointed out when uh, Mr. Langley was here, not one of them is from Wright County. Or out of CTIB or out of the Met Council counties? Um, not one of them is from Wright County. Uh, I can guarantee you many, 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 many of them are likely from Minneapolis, even though Minneapolis is now paying either 10000 or zero. I, I think the, the number may be zero. If you want to hand me that article once, Charlie, because I think it, uh, I, I, think, um, I think it's fair to say that if, if this was talked about out on the street corners, and coffee shops in Wright County, we know where the citizens of Wright County who are, are paying the taxes that we contribute there, what, what they would say. But uh, the tab is the best of the article. You know. Um, but the other thing that they mentioned in there, Mr. Chair and Board, um, that there was some allegation. Now, MSP denies it, but they said they actually had some competitive competition that they, it was almost orchestrated with MSP. Bidding on a on a company's location uh, to, oh, their, yeah. to their city. Now they they claim it's not true, but um, 
the Minneapolis City Council member has heard evidence or heard testimony that 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 was the case so well, mr. chair I'd like to clarify that for Commissioner Burrell when site selectors for corporations come out um, the pitting against is more when they come out with their hand out and they're looking to see who who has what we're looking for it's a matter of who's putting their hand out farther I mean it's it's like in Hennepin County Rogers I'll pick on them Cabela's 17 and a half years of TIF nobody else in was going to touch that but I mean that's, but, that's I think that's what that's yeah. what he's talking about yeah that there may be going okay to this well this year you, you, you shouldn't have MSP and there being the auctioneer it, it, it devalues no. <laughs> no, it, it, it devalues the organization when only to get these companies you have to give them more and more and more handouts because then what you when you get them you get less because they're not contributing like other businesses are but and that's where mr. chair I'll dispute whether a greater MSP is involved in the nuts and bolts of the the incentive package all the way down to the city or the county uh, point I'm not sure if they're dialed in quite that deep on on that part but just to clear up the ten thousand dollars according to the paper and again this is according to the star and trib I, uh, um, the mayor's budget had hundred twenty five thousand dollars in it for the group which seems about what like they've been getting in recent years because they've given them eight hundred thousand dollars since 2011 um, <coughs> but the council took all but ten thousand of that away and slated it it being the ten thousand dollars for a full-time city employee focused on business retention and expansion within Minneapolis so um, I'm not sure what that means. It sounds like it's not going there. Now, granted, you can't get a full-time person for ten thousand. Well, I would so. think of the other. I think it was the other thought way around, too. is what it meant. They're probably probably bad writing. You could interpret that either way. Yeah. I think the intention. Oh, so one hundred fifteen thousand dollars. It was left. Okay. Well, what was left was I think is just bad writing. I think the one hundred fifteen thousand was to get somebody for that economic development thing that would include their, their well, wage yeah. benefits, just, everything okay. else. Think of it for for well, that's maybe that, perhaps that's what it, 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 it meant. Yeah, yeah. Like but okay. for eight hundred and fourteen thousand, you could have eight people getting a hundred thousand a year going across the country and across the world to bring business in, instead of one guy collecting it. Anyway, I think they need to have a little shake up there before we're going to be part of it. But Charlie, I, I do want to agree with your point that I, I do, if, if I remember the budget process correctly, and, and others can pipe in on it, but I think we kind of, we, we had some money that was there for the greater MSP, and then the board wanted to hear before that actually got given to them a yeah. presentation I think that presentation was heard, and I don't think any action occurred since then. So yeah. I think really this board maybe needs to give some advice to the uh, organization, be, whether or not you want to give them that full amount or whether you tell them you'll give it to them, but not to be used to be given as a donation. Because if they can pay someone $814,000, they don't need our ten grand too bad. Thank you. That's it. Mark. Um, we had uh, some negotiations yesterday, and um, it was good. Um, I don't know if I to can, what extent I can say, but can it, say was, we, it was a good. I believe we can say we have tentative agreements with two unions. Two unions, tentative agreements. Believe, yeah. That will be going to vote. Yeah. Wasn't sure what I could say. So. I think they can say if, that. If I couldn't say that, it's it's on. If you couldn't say, Chris did. Some. Chris did. If you couldn't, Chris did. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm innocent. <laughs> um. I guess I don't have much. Uh, Merry Christmas to everybody. Uh, this will be our last meeting prior to that. What's that? I'll let you talk about kick. that. Okay. But I will point out that this is the last meeting that I'll be sitting up here, and Susan will be over there taking minutes. Ah. What? This is the next? last meeting that I will be sitting here, and Susan next. will be over there taking minutes. Why? Susan's not going to be here next week? That's correct. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> so, 25 years. So, I, I now pass you the. Uh, the, the the gavel of history so when they want to know what happened here 25 26 years ago it's you that has to tell them yeah okay yep Ooh, pressure's on yeah we'll and I asked Susan I she, she said you know yeah it's been interesting when these things come up over time and I said well have I been getting them right and she says every time you've, you've never <laughs> misled them once so all the stuff I've been telling you that happened since 1991 has all been true according to Susan so the, the well, dementia hasn't set in yet. we are amazed by your memory mr. <laughs> chair 
<laughs> well, as I always say, with if, both of them. If I don't remember it, I just make it up. Yep. <laughs> There's none of us that are going to dispute you, and Susan's not going to dispute you. I do that all yep, the time. Right. Yep. But Susan, it's been a good run having you over there for 25 years, and I'll miss you next week. But uh, I'll miss you, mm -hmm. Mike. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, a few items up here. Highway 25 Coalition met last Thursday, and that was in, in Monticello. We had a full house, and part of the uh, organizations going forward is uh, Becker Township has now joined uh, the coalition, and that's uh, the joint powers agreement. Any changes, revisions, that is going to go up to fourth floor for their review to make sure everything's correct. And we did get a couple things in there that the uh, to make sure that wasn't uneven from both sides of the river. At least one of the member from either side of the river has to agree to any changes, amendments, expenditures, what have you, just to make sure that since it's like five on two here, it's not they can't just dictate everything and spend the money without us having a say. Um, it's interesting. Go forward. We're going to get the work plan and, and start some of the studies uh, for next year. Uh, we're going to have to get a bigger room. We moved from one room to the next, and we're going to have to get a bigger room next time because there's a lot of chairs at the table. And MnDOT is engaged, which is a good thing because usually if they're not engaged from day one, you've got a problem getting down the road. Uh, next item is Highway 55 Coalition. Uh, we met on Friday. Uh, that was down in Medina. Uh, Marvin Johnson was re-elected chair as re-elected vice chair. We had senators and representatives and, and the, uh, aid from the congressmen and aid from the state senator there. It was a, a good conversation about what didn't happen last year. Um, virtually the what platform. Didn't, what, what didn't happen last year? The legislature didn't actually what, get what something didn't? done. <laughs> virtually the, uh, the uh, platform is the same as the year before with a couple changes to include the federal government because of the FAST Act in there. Um, we're still trying to move forward with uh, going from Arrowhead to Loretto to try to get that four lane accomplished there. Uh, this, this year here, Highway 12 took front and center stage with their issues there, which everybody kind of agreed that it need, something had to happen there really quick. Um, <clears throat> there's a little shake up in the chair positions. Uh, uh, well, it might be friendlier for us because the new chair, Paul uh, uh, Gadzik, from, oh, I'm butchering his last name, um, is from Nisawa, so he's a little bit more. Uh, oh, Galzik? Neil Galzik, is he there? Yeah. Okay. He's a little bit more in tune with what's going on 94 and this, this part of the camp where the other ones were from the southeast metro, which don't have any uh, history or dynamics here. So that Well, you'll have to go down 94 to yeah. get to the core. Yeah, he has get to, to but 55 also, because it'll be yep. more more uh, thing because more from that side of the state has to come through our county to get there. Um, and thing is nothing really earth shattering. We're going to have to see how the AMC and the legislative outlook process goes. Um, they don't have all the committees down. They just have the chairs in most of them, but they're going to have to fine tune what's going on there. Um, like I said last week, I went from a 50% down to almost no percent special session that has been confirmed. There is going to be no special session. Yeah, um, kind of late. Well, <laughs> two people just can't get along. They can't be in the same room together, I guess. Yeah. Well, the state has a person called the governor, but he really lacks leadership. There is some issues there. Now, granted, I'm not suggesting we should have a special session literally a week before, you know, a couple weeks before a regular session is going to start, but regardless of that, uh, I'm not sure how anybody could come to terms with some of the stuff that he suggests. The bully pulpit didn't work. Uh, the other item, Mr. Chair, is last Thursday at 12.30 at the court's kickoff meeting. We had BKB with their full staff there and commissioners, and we had uh, quite a few people here going on to uh, how to start this process. There is uh, a lot of details to go. With. Like I say, it wasn't uh, no earth-shattering anything. It's just the needs. We need to uh, clarify what spaces are are important what's aren't what's the uh, where we're going from here uh, Commissioner Brell is sitting on that uh, courts board with me for going through this which is going to be nice because then gold plated toilet seats they're off the list right Charlie I don't think so they're not <laughs> anyway so it's going more to, to come on more to come on even that. some toilet seats are going to be off the list the yeah. way the discussion sounds like it. 
Well, we just, you know, we want to put out a uh, functional uh, facility, but we want to make sure that we're not just frivolously wasting money either. And, uh, and uh, as, I, uh, as <clears throat> Mr. Hevela keeps saying, maintenance of effort, maintenance of effort. You got to keep that in mind when you do these things. Um, so okay, with that, we'll just go forward and see how it goes here. And, and, uh, and I suspect that we'll be reporting back to the board every time anything and any milestone gets hit. There'll be a full report to the board so the public can see it also. That's all I have, Mr. Chair. And one of the things that's going to need to be um, determined here pretty soon, and maybe you can use the number similar to the highway, but they're going to need to be what exact authority does that committee have? What authority does this Charlie and Mike have? You know, by yourselves, what authority does the committee have? Then what has to come to the board? Those sorts of things. And is there someone before you two that has authority for the smallest of things? Is that, you know, is that Lee? Now, granted, Lee's, you know, I think the last time we had Virgil with authority up to a certain level, um, and Virgil was closer to it and out there more. I'm not sure if Lee will be as close to it as Virgil was or not, but is there going to be a first point of contact, which in this particular case, because the courts are run by the state, I, I'm not sure who else, but, you know, whether it's Lee or Allen, and then... And we take Allen. Or Allen, or we give it to Lee, and Lee takes Allen's advice on it. I don't know, but, you know, there, there just needs to be some structure that oh, up to 500 bucks, this person can decide right there, right now. Might be Beyond that, it needs to go to, yeah, you know, that, either that, Mike a, or... That's a way off. Mike and Charlie, and, the, yeah. No, you're, you're right, it is a way. You're, you're, I guess as, it's, as it pertains to the construction, you're right, it is a, it is a ways off, so... Um, but we do need to clarify those right from the get-go and all the, and I agree, and, and this, the point has to be in admin in here, somewhere in administration has to be the center point, the point of this discussion. Might not be a court good services, job. Services, not court good admin. Might be something Sue would be good at. I would think I but is there any, is there any decision-making processes in the, the creation of the documents and in, 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 the, in the plans where someone less than the full board has authority to approve anything, I guess? You know, when the when the architects are looking at, is there going to be three bathrooms or two shared by the judges or something like that? Who who decides? Or you know, some of those sorts of things. Maybe maybe it's not an issue. Maybe just the board decides. I don't know. I would say that's a big decision. Well, I it's probably a hundred thousand dollar decision. Rachel's retirement. Um, Chris. All right. Thank you. Um, well, we had a meet a meeting last. Wednesday and approved $500 grants for three schools for their basically anti-drug program and we also members of the media committee do the registration for the drive right so we had our um, a number of months um, of schedules and so we had that and otherwise it was a pretty uh, a fairly short meeting and Sheriff, if you have anything to add to that, but his four instead of three, one came through. Oh, we oh okay. We didn't present last game. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. So that will be all right. So four. Yeah, that's been. I mean, it's it's really a, a. We get reports from the schools after they've done these different programs, and it, it and five hundred dollars goes a long way. So it's appreciated, and we do have grant dollars. So schools have a um, program they'd like to present and request a grant. We do have dollars available. And we, um, our SHAC meeting, the State Community Health Services Advisory Committee was, they canceled the meeting itself and so we had a, a short abbreviated version and webinar instead last Friday morning. And basically a lot of the discussion was you know, if the Affordable Care Act is repealed, how is that going to affect our state? And um, of course, uh, they're still working on a lot of wellness incentives and um, strengthening local public health and also addressing the health inequity in so many of the areas. I don't believe that we have a, a problem here in Wright County at all, but in certain certain areas there is definitely not equal access to health care so but that's all i have mr chair i think it's probably a fair assessment that there are going to be changes relative to the affordable care act so i yes there will be okay. if not there will be some unhappy voters yes 
think you probably bet the farm on that one. Yeah. I guess what the impacts are, we will you will find out over time. No, he changes mind. I almost forgot what I was going to talk about. I did have one more thing. Um, I did a little traveling over the weekend, just locally here. Getting up here, but. I called Virgil this morning and I wanted to say what a good job our highway department did keeping the roads clear. Went to Carver County, the roads were just terrible compared to Wright County's. Highway 12 was terrible compared to our roads and uh, as was Highway 7. So we had the, the, we had the best roads of anything that I traveled on. And I know they're struggling with the wind today. Virgil said they're, they're having a tough time with all the wind and snow blowing. but. I just wanted to say yeah. good job for that. Yeah, so. thank you. Charlie, I would agree. I've noticed that many times myself over the years that when you too. cross over in other counties that the yep. <laughs> often in the wintertime, oftentimes the, the roads aren't maintained as well. And, and often just the surface conditions of the oh, road yeah. in the summertime, you notice that they sometimes um, are, are better in our county than others. And yeah. it's dangerous for Wright County drivers because I was following behind one and we got down to Highway 7 and they thought they could stop for the road and went sliding <laughs> right off. <laughs> so, a, a, a question I do have for you and, and Mike though, since you talk about traveling and being out and about, how have your, are your two uh, thank you tours going after the election? The thank you tours? I, yeah. Commissioner Brell is probably all over there, but he's got a lot of air time and face time today. <laughs> and, uh, you know, a lot of uh, press has been written the last few weeks. Um, well, he's been hitting he's, more bars than you have, too. Yeah, he probably does. Yeah, and got to say, thanks he's probably going state to one. state thanking everybody. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I want to say everything also, you know, Merry Christmas to everybody, too. Yeah, Merry Absolutely. Christmas. Absolutely.